1995, I began Mother's Garden. It was a wasteland of hard clay, just like Oroville's clay, where the people who lived there previously wanted to look at the beautiful lake that we have. And so they brought a bulldozer in and knocked down all the trees so they could see the lake. Naturally, all the tops all ran into, this, into the lake. And I was left with the most difficult soil. <laughs> and so thousands of cubic yards later of compost and a slow progression, because I did it mostly with my wife, to build a garden vibrating with the significances that Mother has given us for the flowers. The place where you can feel her presence and connect on the deepest level with the significances of the flowers. A number of you have come already to visit and all are welcome to come and visit. You don't have to work. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm very happy for all the help I get from my and Mahendra, Sirisha, Ramida, all who have come to help and make Mother's Garden even more beautiful. Tonight we're going to see a brief presentation. I won't keep you too long of some of the flowers and their significances at Mother's Garden. This was a, an article I put together, and a friend of mine, who is a head of a college in Colombia, South America, with 2,000 students, put it together in the form of um, a PowerPoint presentation. So, who's going to work the, uh, <laughs> the mouse? I can. That would be great. Thank you, Lucky. This is one of my beloved photographs of Mother giving flowers. Uh, she gave flowers to all of us when we came to see her. So we begin with the iris, the aristocracy of beauty. And we have many iris. We have bearded iris and Japanese iris. We have Siberian iris and many other forms of iris, aquatic iris also. Plants actually grow in the water. So we begin. This is a close-up of a Japanese iris uh, that's about eight inches across. We'll go a little slower. And I tried to work mostly with macro photography to take you into the center of the flower, to go deeply and to connect with its particular vibration. And the vibration of all the iris is aristocracy of beauty. <coughs> this is one of my most beloved quotations from Mother, because she speaks of beauty being our constant ideal, beauty of the soul, beauty of sentiments, beauty of thoughts, beauty of action, beauty in work. And then she says, so that nothing comes out of your hands which is not an expression of pure and harmonious beauty. And then 
and the divine help shall always be with you. These are the bearded iris. And this is a Japanese iris. You'll see some pictures of these Japanese iris. By the way, that's another bearded iris. These do not want the cloud of water. Can anyone read it? The Japanese iris that you see here are between six and eight inches across each flower. The lake is around 20 acres. And uh, we have 10 home sites around it. In the deed, it is written uh, no motor boats, and the area must be peaceful at all times. These are Virginia iris, very prolific. The small ground cover you see is thyme. And these flowers bloom at their peak about the 1st of June. Now that is the reflection of trees across the lake and the iris at the base. And here is a little path with the green, with purple iris, and pale blue flowers that are just an inch high. The peony has always been one of my most beloved flowers, but I have so many of them. I think I love each one more and more the moment I see them. Peony is extremely fragrant. Beauty in art. It's interesting that the air conditioner is moving the screen and giving us, giving us almost a sense of a, of a film. It's much larger than this now, but this was uh, some years back. And that tree that you 
we're looking at, we go back to the tree is uh, called uh, Styrax Pink Chimes, and it just it covers the ground with pink flowers. Background to the peony garden. This is a, a very early flower in peony, which would be good in places like Florida where the late flowering peonies would, uh, would not come out, they would ball up. This, the name of this one is Paula Fay, and last year it had 24 flowers on one plant. <coughs> this peony lives uh, about 100 years. Now this is the Collective purity. My mother has made comments on all of these flowers, and in a series of articles that I'm writing now, 12 of which have been already uploaded on the triarchinoashram.info website, I'm including mothers anytime mother had made the commentary written it out herself, so you can see it in her own hand. This is a line from Sadhguru. Hydrangeas are one of the most hybridized plants. There are hundreds and hundreds of cultivars. I have about 45. You can change the color of the hydrangeas. If your soil is sweet, with a pH of 7 and above, the flowers will be pink. If you put an acid forming fertilizer on it, uh, or iron, it will turn blue. And if your soil is acid, and you want the, fl and the flowers are deep blue, and you would like them to be pink the next year, you apply lime. See, flowers are very receptive, and they are happy when they are loved. So we must speak to the flowers. Uh, let them know how much we love them. Ask them for their help by imbibing us to their vibrations. I mean, here is collective harmony and how, I would say, desperately we need them. Mother has not seen the clematis from the west. And they are very, very beautiful. We have one small clematis in uh, Oroville and the ashram. It's only an inch across in small bunches, but very lovely, which mother can be sentinel. But these are special. Very large sometimes, <coughs> six inches across. <coughs> this one's closer to eight inches across, so it really makes a show. A double flowered form. Columbia, and there was a, a lady attending some of my talks, and her great love was lilacs. Because lilacs in the temperate climates have the most enchanting fragrance. And mother's name is Distinction. Mother never did see this one, of course, the Virginia Bluebell. 
It appears almost overnight. A little misspelling there should be two L's. Uh, it appears overnight, comes into bloom very rapidly for three or four or five, up to six weeks, and then the plant dies down and you wouldn't know it's there. Static beauty, the chameleon. And it often looks as if it's carved out of glass. <coughs> Rhododendrons and azaleas are both abundance of beauty. And these are some of them in Mother's Garden in April. Mother didn't see this. A flower that I feel is so, so beautiful, beautiful and vibrant with, with a, a very special significance, which is now up to us to discover. Mother has given us the way to do it, especially by the opening of the psyche. I planted about 10,000 narcissus, and there are now uh, multiplied to about 20,000. This is uh, early March into early April. It's almost impossible for me to grow the, the exceptional roses because I'm not, I'm not there often enough in Mother's Garden. So these roses are called knockout roses, and some of you I know have seen them in the nurseries. They're not attacked by insects, they don't get diseases, and they just bloom and bloom. This one is a different one. This is a, a work of a man from England who hybridizes modern roses with the old-fashioned, heavily fragrant roses, such as the musk roses. And it gets beautiful flowers with intense fragrances. Dogwoods on the right, white dogwoods. This is a dogwood with azaleas in the front. This is the weeping cherry, about 40 feet high now. Just a cascade of flowers. And these are deciduous magnolias. Not the big white magnolia that Mother named. Perfect vigilance. This is a red bud native to the US. You can see the Virginia bluebell speaking. And the magnolias in marvelous blue, the cherry in the background. And the to the left and to the far right are the first uh, buds and leaves of maple trees. 